Mr. President, thank you so much for doing this. Well, thank you. All right, so let's start with the impeachment news. Yesterday, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said that the House is going to begin an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Um, I know you were supportive of it. Some people believe this could do for him with Democrats what the indictments did for you with Republicans, rally support around him. Do you think there's any risk of that? Look, he's a horrible president. Our country is going to hell. Uh, whether it's impeachment or not impeachment, this man is destroying our country at the border. He's destroying it economically. Inflation's way up now. You see what happened just today. Uh, that's up to them if they want to do impeachment or impeachment inquiry. I didn't ever, never had an inquiry. Nancy Pelosi, crazy Nancy, said, we're going to impeach him. They didn't do inquiries. They went out and they voted because they had the votes. And as usual, everybody votes, you know, for the Democrats. It's a little bit easy. They didn't have Mitt Romney's of the world, and that's really nice because now he's not running today, as you know. He just announced. I think that's great for the Republican Party, for the country, and for Utah. But uh, that's going to be up to them whether or not they want to do it. I have no idea whether they will or not. Uh, we do have a lot of other things, but it's quite important. And they did it to me. And had they not done it to me, I think, and nobody officially said this, but I think had they not done it to me, and I'm very popular in the region. You know, they like me and I like them, the Republican Party. Uh, perhaps you wouldn't have it being done to them. And this is going to happen with indictments, too. They have fake indictments. And I think you're going to see that uh, as time goes by. You're going to see uh, Republicans, when they're in power, doing it. And it's a shame when that happens. I'm not in favor of that, but that's what's going to happen because that's human nature. Mm -hmm. Would you do it if you became president again? Turn the indictment table? Well, on I the would dance? think about it differently. I, I would have never even thought of doing it, but now you certainly have to think about it differently. It doesn't mean I do it because I think it's so bad for the country. Yesterday, President Putin of Russia used this as an example of what a rotten country we are, that they go after their political opponent. And other countries are doing that, too. Other countries that don't like us are doing that. They're saying it's the biggest story. They love it because it makes us look very bad. It makes us look very bad. And they're fake indictments. There's Fannie Willis and all of these people. These are all fake indictments. And uh, I don't know how much my polls have gone. I was doing well before this, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what impact it's had on my polls. But we're way up above the Republicans, and we're way up on Biden. Well, let's talk about the allegations against the Bidens for a minute, because yeah. this was something you tried to raise when you ran against Biden in 2020. Uh, I watched you at that presidential debate right. try to raise these very issues that the now, now the House is investigating. Right. Why do you think that didn't gain traction? Well, it's different when it's a Republican doing it and a Democrat. The, uh, the press is fake news. I think I'm very proud of certain things. I've shown open borders. I've shown crime. I've shown a lot of things. But I've also shown that the press is fake. And if I say something, even if it's true, they don't want to talk about it. You know, it's really what they don't talk about more than what they talk about. They don't talk about things. You know this better than anybody. Uh, I brought it up at the debate. Chris Wallace, who, who tried awfully hard to be his father, but he hasn't got the talent. And what happened, Mike Wallace, who was great, who interviewed me actually in 60 minutes, he actually gave me a, probably the only good interview he's ever done, meaning a nice interview. He liked me and I liked him. He was, a, he was a tough cookie, but he was good and a total pro. But Chris will never be that. But at the debate, he was moderating. And I said, what about the mayor of Russia's wife? He's the mayor of Moscow's wife. Now, you have the mayor of Moscow, him, married to a woman. He passed away, left her a vast fortune from being the mayor, okay? I mean, this is a nice way to make money. And she gave three and a half million dollars to Biden. And I brought that up during the debate, and Chris Wallace said, this has nothing to do with anyone. Well, now it's the biggest subject. Everyone's talking about it. And now they go back to that debate, and that debate's getting a lot of, uh, of look-see. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame that they didn't do it. Chris Wallace should have never done what he did. He tried to stifle it. I mean, literally, I was like debating two people. I was actually debating one and a quarter. I would say Wallace would be one and Biden was a quarter. But he was just standing there. But I said, the mayor of Moscow's wife gave him three and a half million dollars. I want to find out why. What did he do to earn this money? Tried to raise and that. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't do that. You tried to raise China. You, you tried China. to raise the laptop. Yeah. You got shut down. Everything. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't want to discuss it on social media. Got banned on Twitter, the New York Post, all those stories. Let me shift gears and ask you, now that Joe Biden's in the office, um, 
there was just a poll out. 77% of Americans say that Joe Biden at age 80 is too old to be president. Are they right? No, not, not for the reason of old, because I have many friends that are in their 80s. I have friends, Bernie Marcus, that are in their 90s, and they're sharp as a tack. Just, I mean, I would say just about what they used to be. Uh, no, not old. He's incompetent. He's not too old. He's incompetent. And uh, age is interesting, because some people are very sharp, and some people do lose it, but you lose it at 40 and 50 also. Uh, but, uh, no, he's not too old at all. He's uh, grossly incompetent. You look about at some him, of the great... Age. You look at some of the great world leaders. They were in their 80s, and they did... I mean, Churchill, so many people, uh, they were phenomenal in their 80s. You know, there's a great wisdom if you're... if you're not uh, in a position like him. But if you go back 25 years, he wasn't the sharpest tech either. Mm. Uh, Ron DeSantis has come out to say that 80-year-olds shouldn't be president, that uh, if you're the nominee, the GOP will lose age as a cudgel to use against Joe Biden. Does he have a fair point? Well, if he's the nominee, they'll lose because he's a lousy candidate. So, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather take on the age issue. Uh, I feel I'm physically extremely good. I feel, I feel the same way I did 40 years ago. I mean, I feel as good as I've ever felt. Uh, athletically, I'm just about as good as I ever was. I, you know, do certain things. I play golf. I win club championships of, and I beat people that are 25 years younger than me. I hit the ball just as far as I ever. I actually think I hit it a little bit further, but uh, just at this club, there's a big club with a lot of good members, a lot of you good must players. Have good genes, Mr. President, because you eat McDonald's. I know you love chocolate. You love the Diet Coke. How are you doing that? How? Well, it's really a parental thing, much more so than I, th I you know, I believe in the racehorse theory. Uh, fast horses produce fast horses, you know? I mean, it's, uh, it's a little bit about your parents. My parents were very good. They were very, they lived to an old age. Uh, my, uh, my father was, he lived old. He lived into his 90s, well into his 90s. And my mother uh, lived quite a life. Mm. Um, okay, let's talk policy, immigration in particular. Uh, as of late, recently, we've seen several Democratic lawmakers speaking out after their cities, including New York, but many yeah. others, are overrun by the influx of migrants who have come to the country illegally. They want federal money. They want uh, President Biden to fast-track work permits for these people. They want mostly for these migrants to go elsewhere. Right. What should be done about this problem? Well, they're going to have to talk up because no country or city or state is sustainable doing this. You have thousands of people. I was in New York. I saw on Madison Avenue, these are magnificent shops, Madison Avenue, Fifth Avenue, the greatest. Madison Avenue, thousands and thousands of people. And they're sitting on the street. They're not even on the sidewalk because there's not enough room on the sidewalk. And you have these beautiful stores that are paying a lot of rent, and they have to sell luxury merchandise, and that goes to the city in form of taxes and all these other things. And they're not going to be able to stay in business. You, the money that's being lost in these cities, Chicago, Los Angeles, yeah. uh, so now you have the massive crime problem, and it's vast in Democrat-run cities. On top of that, you have the migrants or the illegal aliens, many different names, but the illegal aliens pouring in, going into the cities. And it's sad because the mayor of New York, he knows that it's a very horrible thing. And they're afraid to take on the Democrat Party. You know, it's very hard to take on the Democrat Party. Look at RFK Jr. They're not giving him the vote. I mean, they're saying you have to get a, a vast number of votes in order to even qualify. They're making it impossible for him. You know, they're essentially rigging the election, which they're very good at. So, uh, how do you get them out of there? Like, you, you take over as president, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to have to move them out. Look, this is not sustainable by this country. So, I think the number will be at the end of the year 15 million people. It's not going to be 3 million, 2 million. I think it's going to be 15 million. But the truth is, we have no idea because they're pouring in. Also, they come from prisons, they come from insane asylums, they come from mental institutions. And there's vast numbers of terrorists. I saw just on uh, one of the shows during the weekend that in uh, 2019, that was me, we had no terrorists come in, no terrorists. They knew that they couldn't come in. We were very tough. Zero. It actually said zero, yeah. which is shocking, because yeah. I'm sure a couple got in. And then I see over the last couple of years, it was large, hundreds and hundreds of terrorists coming in. But I noticed in 2019, it said zero 
I don't know if I even believe it myself. Yeah, but it showed that. you that we had a tough policy. And now it's hundreds and hundreds of terrorists are coming in. Thousands and thousands of prisoners and people from mental institutions are pouring into our country. And this is not sustainable. This is not sustainable. When you look at New York and you look at the streets and the people that can't even walk on the sidewalks, they're taking up the schools. We're going to educate people that don't speak a word of English. I mean, our students have enough problems, but we're, they're giving them cell phones. You know the amazing thing? Everybody has a cell phone. I was watching yesterday, and there are hundreds of people sitting on the sidewalk, and these are illegal immigrants, and they all have cell phones. And I say, number one, how did they get the cell phone? Number two, you have to pay your bill, right? Who pays their bill? Mm. But every one of them, they're all looking at the cell phone. They're making calls. And they just came over the, uh, over the border illegally. Now, we had a very strong border. We had the strongest border in history. We had the lowest numbers, the best numbers in history. And it wasn't easy. We built 500 miles of wall. We were going to build another 200 miles. It was under construction. Would have been done in three weeks. And they stopped it. We had a rigged election, as you probably heard, and they stopped it. They stopped this from being built. Well, they could have had that. it done. Let's they could have had it done in a period of three weeks, and they stopped it. But regardless, can I, can I ask you about that though, because that that is one thing that your critics say would have helped to keep some of these migrants out. A yeah. wall. Oh, so sure. Whatever happened with that? Because well, we built what, it. What Border Patrol says is we only added 46 no, miles. Oh, so we, okay. You, you okay. said you're going to do a yeah, thousand. No. Border Patrol doesn't say that. What, who says that are Democrats when they try. So, you have let, hundreds let just, of miles. Let me set up the numbers. You tell me why I'm wrong. Yeah, go ahead. You, in 16, you said that there was going to be a border wall up, up across about uh, 1,000 miles. Yeah. And you I don't know if I said 1,000, but I said whatever. I mean, it's 2,000 miles long, but we have rivers and we have you. You have barriers. of the 2,000 miles, you need it on five to 600 miles because you have v rivers and and desert, you have a lot of different bad conditions. So they said when Barack Obama left office, we had 654 miles covered, and that you were going to get us to 1,000, and that you only added less than 50 miles of wall. OK, ready? Go you, you go. So what they say is that if there's a board lying on the ground, a two by four, that was there for 50 years and sitting there rotted, that that was a wall. And that when I added a brand new wall that went up 30 feet and it's solid steel, concrete, and rebar, that that was not a wall because that was just a renovation. So what they do is they call it a renovation. If there are boards sitting on the ground, if there are nails, if there's steel sitting on the ground, there's no wall. But if it used to be a wall like 30, 40 years ago where they had just a fence because there were no walls, they had just like a little low fence or a barrier so that cars couldn't come across and it was rotted and laying on the ground, they don't give me credit for a wall. But they do actually, because if you look at the numbers, they say, I built almost 500 miles of wall. I built almost 500. Uh, some of that was wood laying on the ground that we took away, threw away, and we built a brand new wall. So what they're trying to say is that we built 50 or 60 miles of wall because there were 50 or 60 where it was never anything. But any wall that was there was uh, decrepit. It was gone. It was rusted. It was rotted. It was laying on the ground and we would actually just take it away. Then we built a, you know, a really incredible new wall. You know, the wall that was built was built to the specifications of the Border Patrol. I was going to do concrete plank, and they said, you have to be able to see through. You have to, you know. And they wanted steel, not concrete. And they wanted inside the steel concrete. And then they wanted rebar inside that. So it was a complicated thing. And it was built to the highest specification. I didn't want to build something that all of a sudden they say, you know, it's no good. You can't see through it or something. Mm -hmm. And we built almost 500 miles, and they admit that. But what they try and do is they say, oh, there was wall there before. It wasn't wall. It was a board laying on the floor. Mm -hmm. That might have been a wall years ago. And it's, well, now it's a President very Biden's selling off. He's selling off the materials that, no, it's you, had, terrible. that you had allocated for new wall. Well, but, just but so this... you know, so I built almost 500 miles. Then we were going to add 200 miles. We thought we were going to yeah. easily win the election, but the election, uh, bad things happened. So what happened, including COVID, you know, COVID gave them a way of cheating. So what happened is I was going to add another 200. We would have had 700 miles, which is really a good number. You needed 500. 700 would have really closed it up. After we built the almost 500, we were going to add another 200. Everything was bought. All we had to do was lift it up and do it, and they actually carted it away. Yeah. I said, you know, these people Selling really want to have open now. borders. Yeah. Um, you also said recently that if you're reelected, you would send special forces and, quote, other military assets to Mexico to stop 
the drug cartels. The Mexican president is very much against this. You're going to start a war? Well, he's a friend of mine. He's a great guy. He's a friend of mine. He's a socialist, but you can't have everything. And I think a lot of him and he thinks a lot of me were friends. And uh, he said the same thing happened to him. He had a rigged election years ago. He said the exact same thing happened to him. Uh, no, uh, I didn't say that. I, somebody said I said that. And actually, it was met with great applause, if you want to know the truth. They said that I said that at a meeting. So you're not going to use the pen. I'm not going to say what I'm going to do. I mean, I may do something. Something has to be done. Look, we're losing, I think, 300,000 people. Okay, but let me ask you. I, I get it. And, and I see to yeah. you that there's a serious problem that, that's no, it's, affecting We're losing more Americans. money than if we were actually in a war. But, we're, but. Not money. A lot of the money Republicans and are saying lives. they're going to do this. We're losing more lives. If we were in a war, we wouldn't be losing, because I believe the number is 300,000. Well, we can't have a war with Mexico. Uh, no, it's a war on cartels. Mexico's petrified of the cartels. The cartels are running Mexico. But if we send our troops across the southern border, you know better than I do well, that I the Mexican president, sending, if he doesn't like it, yeah, we're in a war. I know, but, well, I'm not too worried about that war. Uh, no, Mexico is sending their troops into our country in the form of illegal aliens that are killing people, in many cases, that are uh, causing lots of disease and lots of problems. You know, they're coming in. I had the medical, uh, I had the medical barrier that they, Biden dropped. I had every barrier you could have. Even the judge said, are you sure you want to drop this? I don't think you should drop this. This is a terrible thing. Are you, the judge actually said that because. Title 42? Yeah. yeah. Title 42. He said, he said, you can't drop this. He's telling them. But it expired six months later. He said, well, if it's expired, but you don't want a ruling. The judge didn't want to do it. He said, you're going to destroy our country if you do this. These people are destroying our country. And, and you know, it's amazing. You say, why? Somebody said the vote. I said, they don't need the votes. They cheat. So they don't really need the votes. And the votes would be in a long time from now, OK? You know, they become citizens. But, you know, they'd use them anyway. But it's not that. They actually must want to destroy our country. We have millions of people coming through. We have people that are sick. We have people, massive numbers of people from jails. They're emptying out all the jails in South America. Now, they're emptying out all the jails all over the world now. They're coming in from all over the world. This week, we had 129 countries represented of people pouring into our border. Yep. 120 coming in from the north. Most too. people don't know you have that many countries. You actually have much more than that. Mm -hmm. But we had 129 countries represented where people are coming into our country. Some of these countries, we don't even have people that speak the language of those countries. We don't even know how to teach it. And then the kids end up in our classrooms and they don't speak English. That's right. That's right. It's a terrible situation. Let's talk about the they kids are, in birth rights. Megan, they're destroying our country. Birthright citizenship is an issue that yeah. a lot of people have raised sure. as, uh, as part of the problem. Uh, people come here, they have a baby just so they can stay. Uh, you've said that you will end it by executive order if yeah. you put back in the White House. But putting aside the legal questions around whether that's possible. Some people say you can't do that. Some people I, say you can. Some I'll people say you can. Um, but you made this promise back in 16, and then you didn't do it once elected. And yeah. then as president, you kept saying you were going to sign an executive order on this, and you didn't. So lawyers, why should people believe you now? Because the lawyers didn't want me to do it, because the lawyers were saying you have to go through a whole big thing all over the country. You need votes of every state and everything else. Uh, I would do it. One thing I'll say. When I look at the way Biden had just signed these executive orders on student loans and on everything, knowing that you can't do it, knowing it's going to be overturned, I'd rather get it through Congress. And we were working to get something through Congress. Uh, so crazy. Somebody comes in. If they put one foot on our land, you have to take them. They have a baby. Congratulations. The baby becomes a citizen of this country. Then they have chain migration where the baby then brings in the whole family. The whole thing is crazy. So uh, the lawyers wanted to go through and the politicians wanted to go through and get this approved through Congress and actually go through the states. That's how bad it is. Birthright citizenship. A lot of people say you have to go through states. And I'm not taking an opinion because I don't, want do this, I don't want this. I don't want them using this in court. I happen to disagree with them. And I would have done it. I was getting ready to do it. And then COVID came in, and we had bigger problems. But now you say you will sign an oh, executive I'm order. Oh, I'm going to do it. I will do a, an executive order, yeah, 100 okay. percent. Let's talk about COVID. For years, you've been saying that the reason you didn't fire Anthony Fauci uh, was because he'd been there for a long time, that you would have taken heat, that it would have created a firestorm, quoting your words. 
Then for the first time well, in May... Well, I also said I didn't listen to him too much. I'm yet. getting there. But then in, in May, you started saying, well, he's a civil servant, so I yeah. couldn't technically. The truth is, though, not only did you not fire Fauci, who is loathed by many, many millions yeah. of Republicans in particular, but also some Democrats. By the way... You yeah. made him a star. You made him a star. This is the criticism of you, that you made him the face of the White House coronavirus task You think force, so? That he was at every presser, that he was running herd for the administration on COVID, and that you actually gave him a presidential commendation before you left office. Wouldn't you like a do-over on that? Uh, I don't know who gave him the commendation. I really don't know who gave him the commendation. Well, presidential I have commendation. One went I know. off the mark. Somebody Miller, probably too. handed him a commendation. He probably... But let me just tell you about Fauci. Fauci was very important in the Biden administration, much less important. If you know, he didn't want to stop China. He wanted to let everyone come in from China. I stopped it. I overrode it. I overrode many of the things he did. He was much less important to me. Now, with that all being said, he's been there for years. He was respected. He lost a lot of the respect because of COVID, but he was respected. And on COVID, if you know what I did, I let the governors run their states. And many of the governors uh, opened up their states. Some of them didn't. Florida, that, by the way, true. Florida, by the way, was closed. Uh, but if you take a look at Henry McMaster, he had his state, uh, South Carolina, open. Uh, you take a look at uh, South Dakota. Take a look at Tennessee. A lot of the states were not closed. And I allowed, it's the federalist system. I allowed the governors to do that. I also allowed Democrat governors to do that, but I don't think any of them, none of them did it. Uh, Wouldn't you like to go back and try to clip his wings? This guy was pushing mask mandates on us. He wanted the most extreme measure at every turn. Okay, look, I'm not one that blames a system that if you're civil service or if you have some other protection that you can't get fired because I've done things that are a lot worse than that. You're big right? on the firing. So, so yeah, I fired a lot of people. <laughs> I fired Comey. And that was one of the great firings. I fired Comey, and then I fired a lot of other people in the FBI, and they were great firings because the deep state, and they were at work, and they were not good people. Uh, but I wasn't, I was not a big fan of Fauci. If you look at Ron DeSanctimonious, he was, this guy said the greatest things. I can give you articles that well, Fauci's great. He's wonderful. We love him. We don't do anything without Fauci. This went on for months. But he didn't listen to Fauci. Uh, he did 100%. Look. He shut down Florida for a month. I will give you, he shut down Florida. For a month. Oh, he shut it down for a lot of long. He shut down the beaches. He shut down the roads. He shut down a hospital. He was shutting down everything. He also had long lines of people getting the jab, as he called it. Let's all go get the jab. The guy tried to change history in Florida. Now, eventually Florida was open, but a lot of these other governors didn't shut down at all. South Dakota didn't shut down. McMaster, South Carolina, didn't shut down. Tennessee, uh, there are states that didn't shut down at all. They probably did the best job. But Ron DeSantis was on a, under a lot of pressure, especially given the population, the age of a lot of Florida's I'm citizens. Not saying, I'm not trying to, to blame anybody, okay. but he should say, I closed it down. Eventually we opened it, but I closed it down. But I gave him the right to keep it open if he wanted to. I let the governors make the determination as to whether or not to close it down. But let me ask you this, because this is the number one question. I asked my audience, what would you like me to ask President Trump? Okay. These are your fans. Okay. This is the number one question they wanted me to ask you. That you shut the country down for six weeks in spring of 2020. Operation Warp Speed. Excuse me. Rushed right? through. I didn't really. Well, let, me, let, me, I, let me ask no, their no, question. No, no, but Megan. This I is let, my audience's I question. The, I got to get I know, it out. But I let the governors shut down. Some did and some didn't. Okay. Some didn't shut down at Operation all. Warp Speed, though. Yeah. That was on the vaccines. R they were rushed through. They have helped but also hurt a lot of people. And your White House actually supported mask mandates. So wouldn't you like a do-over on any of that? Look, when this came in, nobody knew what the hell it was. It sounded like an ancient, you know, pandemic. You thought that was from 200 years ago or from 1917. We never thought you'd have a pandemic. Nobody had any idea. We got word that bad things were happening in China right around the Wuhan clinic. And I was the one that said it was in the Wuhan clinic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, stayed, I stuck with it, and it was. It was absolutely. It came out of the Wuhan clinic. But you take a look, and what we did was, we, this was brand new. Nobody knew what the hell it was. There's dust. Somebody said there's dust coming in from China. And it's killing people in Italy, and it's killing people in France, and it's going to kill people here. And by the way, I shut it down to China. That was a big move. I saved thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives by doing it. 
But honestly, nobody, I don't blame a lot of people because nobody knew what it was. Now we do understand it somewhat. Nobody really understands it even now fully. But nobody knew what COVID was, and it wasn't even a name. I called it the China virus. I still do. I call it the China virus. It came out of China. You know, they call it COVID and COVID-19. As far as the vaccine's concerned, uh, you had the original COVID, and the vaccine had an impact on that. And there are some people, I will tell you, some friends of mine that are Democrat, I think they voted for me, but they're Democrat, very smart people, top people. They say, you know, I don't understand one thing. Why don't you talk more about the vaccine? It was one of the greatest things you've ever done. Now, think of that. They say to me, and I say, I'm not going to talk about it one way or the other. First of all, no mandates. I don't want mandates. I never had mandates. Florida sort of had a mandate because they were giving the vaccine. They were demanding everybody take the vaccine. That's another thing. But no mandates, no anything. I didn't demand anybody take it. But I have people on the other side. I don't, not my side, although probably there are some on my side too. They said, you saved 100 million people because I got it done in nine months as opposed to five years to 12 years. A lot of people- You're proud of it. No, I'm not proud of it. I'm saying what Democrats think. Democrats- you, I get it. I mean, and I'm not, and I'm I'm not, not somebody I'm who not, denies some of the good yeah, that the vaccines yeah. did. I, I lived through that too. But yeah. of course, a lot of people have been vaccine injured. And that's one of the questions. Those people are mad that they were rushed through and that they can't sue. Well, I never gave mandates, and people have to make up their own, you know, make their own decision, as far as I'm concerned. Now, some places had mandates, or very strong mandates, uh, largely Democrat governors and probably some Republicans, et cetera, et cetera. But there are Democrats that say, why aren't you talking about that? It's one of the, they really believe strongly. One said, you say, and this is very smart people, they said, you saved 100 million people worldwide. Uh, in 1917, you know, they, it could have been as much as 100 million. It ended the First World War because all the soldiers were dying of, of this horrible disease of 1917. You know, it actually ended the First World War. The soldiers were dying. They were on the lines. They're fighting and they're dying of this horrible disease. They said, you might have saved 100 million people, 50 million people. Why aren't you talking about it? I said, I'm not talking about it. But what I did do is I got something done for that specific Thing. I also got Regeneron and I got a lot of therapeutics done, which were great. I also got the robes and the leather and the rubber and all of the different things, the ventilators. Mm -hmm. We did a tremendous job and it's never, you know, they appreciated what I did with the economy. I got a lot of good marks on economy. I got a lot of good marks on a lot of things, rebuilding the military, getting rid of ISIS, uh, the biggest tax cuts in history. Uh, Supreme Court. I never got I think the credit that I deserve I, on COVID, and I'll tell you the way I look at it, it came in and nobody knew it was. We have to put ourselves back then. I had a meeting and we had a lot of professionals in the Oval Office. They say, sir, something bad is happening in the world. I said, what's that? And they said, people are dying. They're dying in China, in this area. And there was pictures of body bags all over the place, black body bags, satellite pictures. And they were all over. I said, that's strange. And then they'd have a next, another meeting the next day and the next day and the next day. And all of a sudden, they had something where the first person died in the United States and then another. Yeah. And then it died. Then they started dying all over Italy and all over Europe. Nobody really knew what it was, Megan. I hear you. Uh, let's shift gears and talk about trans and women's okay. rights. In 2016, you said that Caitlyn Jenner, who is trans, could use the women's restroom at Trump Tower. Uh, you allowed biological men to compete in the Miss Universe pageant at the time, which you owned. A lot has changed since 2016. Have you? Yeah, well, issue? I have, but, but look, uh, I knew Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, this, was, and, uh, this is very much like the same subject we just talked about. This was brand new. Yeah. Okay, this is a brand new subject also. There's a lot it of- It hadn't exploded. A lot of the, it, well, it hadn't exploded. I mean, nobody talked about it, really. And so they're saying, what do you think? And people say, yes, use, no use. Um, but I'm the one that wouldn't allow it in the military. That was a big move. I wouldn't allow it in the military. And I went to generals. I say, general, let me ask you, do you like it? The real generals, not the ones you see on television, not the millies of the world. I went to the real generals. I said, what do you think? And they did not like it. They did not like it. They didn't, nobody wanted to go public with it. It's a very hard subject. I ended it in the military. Now, since 
This character got in. He's allowed it in the military. You know, part of the problem is you'd have to take massive amounts of drugs. In the military, you're not allowed to take drugs. And you have to take massive amounts of drugs. So right there, it should not be allowed. But I ended. I took a lot of heat. No matter what you do there, you're going to take heat. You understand? Yeah. But, yeah, but how I do mean, you feel? Caitlyn Jenner, did, did, was how do you she allowed? Now? Should, was she should allowed biological use? men who say that they're trans be allowed in women's restrooms and women's locker rooms, women's prisons, women's spaces? Yeah, uh, my, my stance on that is really pretty much uh, what I had in the military. Uh, I think it so has no. to be. Huh? No, they yeah. shouldn't. Yeah, I, that's my stance. I mean, that's been my stance. Um, I may have allowed Caitlyn. Caitlyn's Caitlyn, right? Uh, I knew Caitlyn as Bruce. I knew Bruce, and, you know, Bruce was a great athlete and a very handsome person, a very handsome guy. And all of a sudden, Bruce is Caitlyn. I said, what's this all about? This was a brand new subject, too, just like uh, just like we talk about, you know, the pandemic was a subject that nobody knew anything about. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew anything about it. It was all uh, early. You make a decision and you make the decision very strongly. No, I get it. Look, I, I myself have changed a lot on this yeah, issue I have, since I 2016. Have. I'm just wondering, I'm just trying to figure out whether you have, in fact, reversed on it. I don't think I've changed. I think I've just, you know, at the beginning, it was such a small subject. Nobody really thought about it. Uh, but then with time you change i really where i f probably took the hardest line was on the military yeah that's true well what, what about the children that's become an issue now should children be provided with access to puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones yeah. when they're minors yeah, i'm so against it first of all many of them i heard like 62 percent when they grow up, when they're older, they're saying, who did this to me? Why did you do this to me? Second of all, the parents have to make the decision. You know, they're trying to give it to school boards and schools and things to make a decision. It's unbelievable to think, you know, I talk about mutilation sometimes in my speeches. We will stop the mutilation of children. And then I'll stop and I'll say to the people in the audience, I'll say, can you imagine that I'm talking about we're going to stop mutilation of children? Yeah. But that's what it is. It's the mutilation of children. And we will stop the mutilation of children. Ten years ago, you wouldn't even, nobody would ever to think, to, think of it. I am telling people, because I guess I'm a politician, whether I like it or not, uh, as a politician, as somebody that represents a lot of people, I'm telling people that we're going to stop the mutilation of children. Who would have to say a thing like that? Yeah. You'd think it would be automatic. Would you, so would you be in favor of a ban then on puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones for minors? I, th I think yes, 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 yep. I would. Can a man become a woman? Um, <laughs> in my opinion, you have a man, you have a woman. I, 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 think, I think part of it is birth. Can the man give birth? No. No, although they'll come up with some answer to that also. Someday, <laughs> I heard just the other day, they have a way that now the man can give birth. No, I would say uh, uh, I'll continue my stance on that. Uh, okay, let's talk a little bit about the criminal cases. Okay. In particular, I'm interested in the obstruction case, the obstruction. Um, some argue that criminal or not, you behaved irresponsibly with our national security documents. <clears throat> For example, We've all now heard the audio tape of you, post-presidency, showing third parties some sort of document that you're describing as secret. Allegedly, it was a Department of Defense Mark Milley plan to attack Iran. Now, this was at a meeting right here at Bedminster, where we are now. You later told Brett Baer in an interview that you had no document that day, only newspapers and magazines. But we hear you on the tape. We hear you saying, quote, look, this was him. This was the Defense Department and him. It's highly confidential. This is secret. This was done by the military and given to me. As president, I could have declassified it. Now I can't. This is still a secret. Now, why would you describe a newspaper article as highly confidential and still a secret, saying as president you could so, have declassified it, let me but just now you something. can't? Let me just tell you something. Number one, I did nothing wrong because I come under the Presidential Records Act. Uh, the fascists who are going after me, and they're not going after Biden, even though he has about 10 times more documents, maybe more than that. He has documents going back 40 years or 50 years. We did nothing wrong. I come under the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to have these documents. This was done in 1978, and this was done for exactly this reason. I'm allowed to have these documents. 
the other side didn't even mention that. They don't even mention the words Presidential Records Act. The Presidential Records Act is very important. Bill Clinton took out in his socks, it's called the Socks case, I'm familiar. where a very respected judge, a very liberal judge, but a very respected judge, ruled in favor of Bill Clinton, that he was allowed to take these very important documents, conversation with conversations with world leaders, took it out in his socks, and they found them in his sock drawer, and they call it the Sox case. Uh, other people, too. We come under the Presidential Records Act. Now, who doesn't is Mike Pence doesn't because he was a vice president, and he has a much higher standard. Uh, Joe Biden doesn't because he was... I mean, he was a vice president at the time, and he was a senator. He's got thousands of documents as a senator. And even I watched a couple of uh, Democrat senators say very strongly, there's no way he took that out from the skiff. He's got documents, and he's fighting them like crazy. I come under the Presidential Records Act. It's a very simple thing. Number one, it's civil. It's not criminal at all. True. These these fascists and these Marxists and these people that are dealing and they leak and they're disgusting people. They're horrible for the country. Uh, we have a deranged guy named Jack Smith who's been overturned at the Supreme Court a number of times. And he gets overturned. You know why he gets overturned? Because he goes too far. They don't even mention the Presidential Records Act. This is all about the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to have these documents. I'm allowed to take these documents, classified or not classified. And frankly, when I have them, they become unclassified. People think you have to go through a ritual. You don't. It, at, at least in my opinion, you don't. But it's even beyond that. Because the Presidential Records Act allows you to do, as president, only as president. Now, the other people that we talk about, including Biden, he wasn't president. So what he did is a different standard. And he should have real problems. They really should be talking about that, not about me. I did absolutely nothing wrong. Okay, but let's get to my question. Why would you be holding up a newspaper saying this is still secret? I'd have to I look at it. I could declassify it if I were look, president. I would have not. to look at it. But that's what well, you told I Brett Baer. You told Brett Baer that that was a newspaper. I could have or declassified. Magazine. No, I also told Brett Baer, as I remember, I don't know, it was a long time interview. Will you tell uh, me what were you I waving told, around? I in that also meeting? told Brett Baer that it wasn't a classified document. What were you waving around in that meeting? Because it certainly sounds like it was an I'm not like going to talk to you about that because uh, that's already been, I think, very substantiated and there's no problem with it. It hasn't been substantiated. Jack Smith says Megan, it was let the me just tell you. Let me and just you told Brett Barrett Let me tell you. Here we go again. I'm covered by the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to do what I want to do. I'm allowed to have documents. The Presidential Records Act is civil, not criminal. That's true. In any way, it's that's civil. True. And I'm covered by it 100%. Can I ask you what you mean by that? And this shouldn't even be a case. Now, no, and I, it I'm should not, be I'm a not case. trying to come at you criminally. Of course, I'm trying to of say, course you are. But listen, no, no, I it should off be a case. Megan, let me just tell you. about the criminal. This should be a case for Biden, because he is not covered by the Presidential Records Act. This was, I guess, started because Richard Nixon kept documents. So did many other presidents. And so did presidents after. Bush kept documents. Obama kept documents. They all had, in fact, of all people, of all groups, the New York Times wrote a story. The only power that NARA has is to say, please, 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 Mr. President, can we have these documents? The National Archives. Okay? Now, they may be able to sue you civilly, not criminally. They may be. They don't even have that power, probably. But they may be able... But so listen, I get all that. The New York I, Times... I get all wait, that. But the, Megan, but the obstruction case isn't about that. The obstruction okay, case says... So, you, they okay, they, so even if you had the right to the documents, once you get the subpoena, you got to fork them over. The you subpoena ready? said give us anything with a Are classified you marking. Go ahead. This is just like the Mueller stuff. They create a fake crime, and then they say you obstruct it. This is a fake thing that they've done. And then they say it's always obstruction. They say, oh, he obstructed. He this, he that. And you know what they call obstruction? When you fight them. When you fight them, they call it obstruction. So they create a fake crime because there was no crime because I come under it. I don't want to sound boring to all of your many people. I hope you have a lot of people. You will. <laughs> but you know what? They create a fake crime. And they did that with Mueller. They created a fake crime, a terrible fake thing that took two years. And then they said, all right, that's fake. But he obstructed. Uh, that's what they do here. They have a fake crime, and I didn't obstruct anything. Okay, next. Well, that was my question, that, you know, even if I think they're accusing me of a fake crime, if I get a subpoena, 
I have to comply. I used to practice law for 10 years. I've, you got to you got to comply. I you got to fork over the documents and then fight. I have been complied with everything. I have given more documents, and uh, they came in. They raided Mar-a-Lago, probably illegally. Okay, mm -hmm. and we'll find that out. They took documents that they weren't even allowed to do, but they took documents. They took everything. They, they I found have a, documents. I have, with and, and I would markets. have given it to them. You know what? We had a meeting. I said, "What do you want?" And instead of doing that, because they're doing this for political reasons. The reason they're doing this is for election interference. But let me just say, I, and I don't dispute that, frankly, but the question is simply, your lawyer signed a certification saying they had turned over everything that was responsive. Then when the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago, they found documents that were responsive that had not been produced. Mark Class. I don't know what the timing is. Again, I'd have to check That's the time. That's it. I don't know. I just don't know the timing. All I know is I'm allowed to have those documents. But, that, but once you get a subpoena, you have to turn them over. I know this. I don't even know that because I have the right to have those documents. So I don't really know that. Uh, these are Democrat fascists that are there to interfere with an election. And frankly, you can't say that they obstructed when they create a fake crime. So ready? In Russia, 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 it was a fake crime. At yeah. the end, they said, oh, well, that's not working. But he obstructed because he fought us. So they create a fake crime, illegally, by the way, illegally. The dossier was fake, everything was fake. Yeah. And then they say, I fought them and I obstructed. This is the same thing. They have a fake crime. There is no crime. In fact, it's civil. It's not criminal. That's true. And so they're they, saying that's why they, they say espionage act to make it criminal. Oh, they make it I espionage wanna, act like it's something we'll like, be here all day like the Spanish all. Armada is going to raid us. And look, the espionage act of 1917, has no impact on this. I am covered 100%. I got it. There's a dispute about one, that, one about whether, the, well, you, about you whether presidential. It, no, no, they're just, it. just so my audience knows. I don't it. think there's any dispute that I'm covered under the Presidential Records Act. Well, you're covered, but it's not clear that it allowed you to take all those documents. You can't say it every says, CIA. It says what it says. You're so allowed. And do you believe that every CIA document that came to you as president was automatically yours to keep no matter what? Uh, I'm not going to answer that question. Well, so because, that's the dispute. No, no because I think it's clear in the document. The Presidential Records Act was a very complex thing that took a long time to do, having to do more with Richard Nixon because he kept everything. You know, you know that, yeah, right? Yeah, yep. And they said, we don't want to have this anymore. So they did this, and these thugs and deranged people, they didn't even mention that. They never mentioned that. They never talked about that. They never said, gee, the Presidential Records Act, do you know they don't even mention it? And everybody knows. Yeah, that's right that I'm covered by that. So you can't have obstruction when they create. And we had that in uh, Mueller. They created all of these phony deals and phony documents and they, the dossier, the fake dossier. And after it was created, it was all created, then it was shown to be phony and I won. But then they say, oh, it was phony. We did things illegally, but he obstructed. He obstructed because he, he hid this, or he said something, or he fought us. He fought us. No, I, I did, Megan, I did absolutely nothing wrong. And well, that's, that, I wouldn't even be talking to you if I thought I did. What's crazy is you're really accused of keeping documents and not turning them over when you were allegedly required to. But you're not accused of destroying any any documents. No, I didn't do that. Hillary or giving Clinton them, or giving Hillary them to anybody. Clinton destroyed documents yeah. while yeah. under subpoena, while under yeah. subpoena, and wasn't even charged. Never mind, didn't face four criminal tri trials. That's right. Does it make you angry? Yeah. When I saw the mugshot, I said he's angry, and I get it. Yeah, you know, it makes me angry. So Hillary Clinton got a subpoena from Congress, which is your highest style subpoena. That's the ultimate subpoena. After she got the subpoena, not before, she didn't do it before, and oh, gee, I didn't know. That's right. She got a subpoena. After she got a subpoena, she burned and acid washed 33,000 emails, okay? And nothing happened to her. Nothing happened to her. And Comey got up, and he said, here's what she did. And she, he went through all these crimes. And he said, but no reasonable prosecutor would ever prosecute. Well, I did nothing. I did nothing wrong. And they prosecuted me. She burned and literally acid washed, bleach bit, they call it. Very expensive process. Nobody does it because it's so expensive. 
Then she took her phones and they knocked the hell out of them with hammers. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. She took her telephones and they're knocking and nothing happened. Yeah, there's a double standard in this country and the people aren't standing for it. Yeah. People get it. You said to Hugh Hewitt you planned on testifying in your own defense at at least the Mar-a-Lago documents. All of them. I'll, all I'll do all of them. I mean, I have no problem with uh, talking about any of it. Question on the legal expenses. Uh, the, reportedly, your PACs have spent 40 million bucks so far defending all these cases. Yeah. Some people worry, how's he going to run a presidential campaign if all the Republican donations are going to fund the legal fees, which get more expensive when you have trials. So, well, that's why they're doing this. They have, not only that, I have civil cases that are funded by them. They have a woman that I never met, other than I guess I took a picture with her 25 years ago with her husband on a celebrity line. Uh, a woman that I never met, and she sued me. She wrote a book. E. Jean Carroll. And I took her into Bergdorf Goodman, into a room, and did bad things to her. I said, where the hell did this come? I never, I have no idea who this woman is. She's got a little picture of herself and her husband standing on a big celebrity line, shaking my hand, like from 25 years ago. She didn't know the date, she didn't know the location, she didn't know anything, she didn't know anything. And an unbelievably hostile judge to me. In fact, she did an interview with Anderson Cooper. When you watch that interview, I'm a totally innocent man. But they, th that case is financed, and you probably haven't heard this, by the Democrat Party and Democrats. She was recruited by some Democrats to bring She was recruited by Democrats, defamation. that case. And it's, it's such a violation of the law. It's so, such a horrible thing. I have other cases, civil cases. Speaking, I, wait a minute. I have like civil cases where, Dem and the reason they're doing it is they want to take as much of my time because they don't want to run against me. Just so you understand. But can you win? Can they you don't win want to if run all the money is going to the lawyers instead of, you know, rallies and well, about the vote efforts? Fortunately, I have a lot more money than that. But a lot of money goes to the And I help other people because other people get dragged into these things and we help a lot of other people. These people would be destroyed if we didn't help them. We have to help them. What about the people who are saying, well, I'm just going to give my... I, Ron DeSantis needs to get this or Tim Scott should win because... Then the money I donate will go toward... Well, I will vote. say this. Uh, in the meantime, nobody's talking about them because it's only time to talk about me. You know, I've had that before, in all fairness. Nobody's talking about Ron DeSanctimonious. Nobody's talking about anybody. They're only talking about me. The Quinnipiac poll came out just before I walked in. I mean, it's 62 to, like, almost nothing. These people are at nothing. You have Asa Hutchinson's at zero. Why is he running? You have Chris Christie's at two. Why is he running? You have these people are very low. Nikki Haley's very low. They're all very low. Ron DeSantis is very low. Ron DeSantis is at 11 or 12, and I'm at 62. I have other polls where I'm in 70s, and he's in the, you know, twos. Why do you call him five. Ron DeSantis? Why do you call him Ron DeSantis? Sanctimonious. Sanctimonious. But be, the reason in Sanctus is DeSantis is just sort of an abbreviation. Um, he was running, left Congress was running for the governor of Florida. He was being decimated. He had no chance. He was uh, wiped out. And he came to see me. I didn't know him very much at all, but what I did know is that he was on television along with 150 other congressmen, Republicans, that talked about impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two, and they'd say I was innocent. And they turned out to be right. By the way, those two, that phone call was perfect. My Georgia phone call was even more perfect. But the phone call, was perfect with all the stuff. You once asked me a question, what about the phone call? It turned out not only was it perfect, all of the stuff that's happening now shows that Donald Trump was right on that phone call when I spoke to the president of Ukraine. Anyway, Ron DeSanctimonious comes in and he said, could you endorse me? Because I think I could win. I said, Ron, you're so far behind. You don't have a chance. You're, you're dead. He said, but I didn't know. It was running against... Uh, the man who was the Secretary of Ag Agriculture, I think his name, Adam Putnam, and he was up by 30 or 40 points. It was over. It was over. He said, if you endorse me, you're so popular in Florida, if you endorse me, I will win, I believe. I say, you know, I think if we brought back Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, I don't know if it's going to help, but let's give it a shot, okay? Because I didn't know Adam Putnam. In retrospect, perhaps I would have endorsed him instead because I wouldn't have had to do much endorsing because he had already, it was one, the thing was over. He was already measuring the carpets. So what happened is 
I endorsed him, and he became a rocket ship. And he ended up winning a primary very shortly thereafter for, by a lot, you know, by a landslide. Adam Putnam, it was like a, it was like a bomb went off. Wait. And then he said, I'm not going to win against Pullum because he was, if you remember, he turned out to be a crackhead. But he was, he was a very popular um, person, running, a uh, good-looking guy, running African-American, running for governor on the Democrat side, along Stacey Abrams. He and Stacey Abrams were the two hot politicians in the Democrat Party. So polls were looking bad for Ron. I said, you know what, Ron, we'll do two or three rallies. We'll do Trump, big, beautiful Trump rallies for you. I'll get to get you in. And I did, I guess, a couple, maybe three. Uh, big, big, beautiful rallies. I said, you're going to win. He said, I don't think so. I said, you're going to win. I'm telling you, you're going to win. And he won, OK? And then four years later, they said, would you run against the president? He said, I have no comment. I said, he said he had no comment. That means to me he's running. So I started hitting him very hard. Some people said, sir, he's a Republican. You shouldn't hit him. I said, no, I, we're going we're gonna to hit him very hard mm -hmm. because he's very disloyal. So when I say sanctimonious, uh, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. He's uh, a very terrible thing, I think he did. You know, I'm a loyalist. I'm a loyal person. Here's another thing. A lot of the consultants, you know, these great genius consultants, you pay them all this money, they don't know anything. They said, don't bring it up, sir, that he was disloyal, because the people don't care if he was loyal to you or not. I said, I think they do. I was right. So I've driven him down to almost nothing. I don't even think he's going to be in second place much longer. But second place is like 60 points below me, 60 points. The poll that just came out, in fact, the commentators were saying, this is crazy. Yeah. This isn't even a race. No, you're way ahead in the, on the Republican primary contest. Like, excuse me, like nobody's ever seen before. Let's talk about the actual general election, though, for a second, because okay. this is the second. I'm way most, ahead of Biden, also, by the way. This is the second most requested question okay. that my audience had for you. Everyone knows you think 2020 was rigged. How are you going to unrig it okay. in 2024? I get that question a lot too. Look, they use COVID to cheat. They cheat anyway, because how can you win elections? Open borders, high taxes, high interest rates, no voter ID. I mean, everything they do is like April Fool's Day. It's the opposite. Okay. They have horrible policy. They're only good at cheating on elections. You want to know the truth. And I get the question, too. We have unbelievable people, and we're going to be fighting like hell. Because if I don't win the election, meaning this philosophy, this thought, but if I don't win the election, uh, I think our country is finished. I think it's the most important election we've ever had. If I don't win this election, like you talk to me about all of the different prosecutions, these aren't prosecutions. These aren't indictments. These are Biden indictments. This is a different. This isn't God coming down from high and indicting you for. This is crooked Joe Biden. He's crooked as a three-dollar bill. He used to say two-dollar bill, but we have a few of them around. <laughs> uh, he's a crooked guy. He's a crooked politician, and he said, "Indict my political opponent." So when they say indict, you know, it's very interesting. The press. First, they start that way. But then with time, they say, oh, well, he's under indictment. No. These are all Biden indictments, including the DA's office. You know, he put his top guy in the DA's office in Manhattan. And everybody says it's not even a case. I mean, it shouldn't even be brought. You've yeah. seen that. You've heard that. You probably... I've said that. Okay. It's a ridiculous. It's a ridiculous case. But they put... He put his top people in the DA. He's dealing with Fannie Willis in Atlanta. It's all a hoax. I know, but, but, but here's the thing. No, but here's, the it's very who, important for people to know Because Republicans this. are bummed out. They're thinking, I'm not even going to vote. Forget it. My vote's not going to no, count. It's just the opposite. They're, you know, I don't, they're going to get it they're by the mail-in ballots again. They're going to vote in numbers that you've never seen before because they see what's happening. Should and they do the mail-in? Should the GOP voters do the mail-in? OK, here's what we can't allow. Yeah, I would, I would say let them do it either way. You know, I'm less on that. I like the Tuesday stuff. But then you see what happened to Cary Lake, where all the machines were broken, or a big portion of them. Wouldn't it be smarter to bank some vote before well, no, you could, But day? the problem is they throw the votes out. I mean, it's crooked. We have a Wait, wait, wait. So be clear. What is the message to the voters? Do you want them to do the, the uh, vote in, the mail-in vote, or no? Everybody, people say yes, do it. I, we have a bigger problem. I believe they send in fake ballots. Okay, that's the bigger problem. That's your third problem. I believe they send in a lot of fake ballots. And when you look at some of these elections, in Pennsylvania, I was leading by so much at 9.30, and they, all of a sudden, voila, they happened to find a lot of ballots. 
Our elections are crooked. Our elections are rigged. Our borders are open. Our country's in trouble. Our country's in trouble. And now they're arresting and indicting their political opponents. You know what this means, what they did? If I won, I could say, oh, let's see, who's running against me? Uh, some Democrats run, oh, he's very popular, because I'm leading Biden in all the polls, just about all the polls, by some very, very big numbers. I could say, oh, I don't want to run against him. I call my attorney general. I say, will you do me a favor, indict him for something? Yeah. And the good thing with me, I have a voice. So I can sit here with you. I can sit here with other people. I can at least, a lot of people don't have that voice. You know, if they get indicted, that's, they're out of politics. They have to announce within an hour that they're going to drop out of the race. That would be the norm. But what they've done is they've made this like the norm. I can sit there and say, well, you know, I don't like this guy. This guy's beating me in the polls. Indict him. But this this is, is, very, is a very dangerous this thing. This is very thinking. scary for you because you're facing left-wing judges. You're facing some likely left-wing juries, yeah, and at least three out of the four. Yeah. There is a realistic chance you could go to prison. Um, Can you see that happening? You know what? My I have a great attitude. It doesn't affect me at all because uh, I'm fighting for the country. I'm fighting for the people. I'll tell you what. Uh, the best poll numbers that anyone's ever seen. I mean, these poll numbers are so good, and it makes me feel good. But I think we're going to win the election no matter what happens. I think because the people know it's all fake. Again, these are, an indi these are Biden indictments. This is, an, this is a guy that is grossly incompetent. I don't even believe it's him. It's the people, the fascists that surround him. Because I don't believe he's smart enough to do this, if you want to know the truth. Do you think he goes the distance? Do you think he actually will be the Democratic I don't. I can't imagine. I watched him yesterday. Uh, he couldn't put two sentences together. I can't imagine. I mean, look, Washington Post came out today. He shouldn't do it. And it's not an age thing. It's a competence thing. He can't talk. He can't talk. And, of course, he has to debate, I guess. I hope he's going to debate. I'm going to debate. You know, I don't want to debate people that I'm 60 points up on because what's the purpose in doing that? Does that mean no presidential primary debates for you? Well, I don't see it. Look. None? When you're leading, why would I do it? How about do the one just, re just before Iowa? Do it. I'll moderate it. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I appreciate that. You know, like, <laughs> like you did with the Rosie O'Donnell. Would question. it be a deal breaker yeah. for you? Look. Would it? Look. Would the, it? The people, want, <laughs> the people want a smart president. A smart president that's leading by 60 points Ronald Reagan didn't do it, Nixon didn't do it, nobody does it. I mean, if you're leading by, why would you do it? You get for the voters. You Just get for people, them. and then I have a somewhat hostile network. You I know, want to see I mean, it. frankly, I have a little bit of a hostile network. Like you asked me a question when you were moderating the debate for Fox, that frankly, if I didn't come up with the answer only Rosie O'Donnell, I would have had a problem with that. That was a bad question. That was a great question. That, no, it was a nasty it was question. It awesome. Though. You know, there are questions that. Are, it's not that they're not answerable, but no matter if you're Winston Churchill, he was very good at the You debating. handled it well, your poll numbers went up. I'm not Let's saying that. No, it. I got a little bit lucky. I came up with a good answer. But can I tell you, there are questions that you can ask that no matter how good you are at debating, no matter how you could be the greatest debater in the world, I get great credit for that. Some people say I won. I don't think I won because of that. I think I won because I had a great record and people knew me. You know, they knew me and they knew me on The Apprentice and they knew me in terms of development and stuff. Mm. But there are questions that you can ask that no matter who it is, the answer is never a great answer. You know, there's never a great answer to certain questions. And I could give you 10 of those questions right now. I just don't want to. <laughs> Let's talk personal for a minute, if you don't mind. Um, haven't seen a lot of Melania lately. How's she doing? And how's Barron doing? Because I know he's senior in high school now. Yeah, he is. he's doing really well. He's in school. Uh, she's doing very well. She's very strong, very... Um, very even keeled and she's a very good woman as you know uh, she was a very popular first lady I mean I go out to rallies and they have pictures of Melania with we love our first lady with so many posters you know where they're in the audience and they're because we're getting big people we had the biggest rallies we've ever had Do you we had, believe they never put her on Vogue on the cover of Vogue no, and they no. just they just put yeah, Corinne Jean-Pierre in there I know. can you believe it can you believe it she was on the cover of Vogue before she met me yeah and during, but once I said I'm running for president, that was uh, that was the end of the coverage. What's a typical dinner? It's like by the way, guys? and it's so sad, because but she doesn't care. She's been on the cover yeah. of the magazines for a long time, and she was on the cover of Vogue before, 
And she was actually very friendly with Anna Winter. But once I ran for politics, that was the end of that. And that's OK. She's very, uh, she's a very calm person. It's very interesting. And I think that's what people like about her. Uh, dinners are nice. Dinners are like other people's dinners. You get along. We get along. We actually get along very well. What's happening with Barron? Is he going off to Barron's, college? And yeah. how do you choose one? Because they all hate all Republicans, never mind one named Trump. Barron's a, a very good athlete. He's very tall. He is tall. How tall is he? About 6'8". And, uh, and he's a good kid, you know? He's a good-looking kid. He's a, he's a good student, great student, actually. Very good student. You want him to go to Wharton? Where do you want him to go? Well, we're, I, we're thinking about that right now. That's, mm -hmm. Those are the things we're talking about right mm. now. What do you think? Melania is so mysterious to so many. Yeah. What, what do people misunderstand about her? Well, I think part of the beauty is that mystery. Do you know, I was with Barbara Walters. She was a great friend of mine. And she was an amazing person. She interviewed me many, many times. And uh, I was on her most exciting fascinating. people of the most fascinating people of the year. I think more than anybody else. I mean, she was, I was on there a lot. This was even before politics, right? But Barbara was unique. And I said, so you've interviewed everybody. Who is the one that you would like to interview more than anybody else? If you could have, she said, that's easy. I said, who, oh, Greta Garbo. I said, you want to interview Greta Garbo? Why? Now, she was a great actress, but you know, I want to be alone. She goes, I want to be alone. And uh, she had a great beauty, but she was, very uh, reclusive and never did an interview. I don't say Melania is like that, but she is a much more, you know, she's introspective and she's confident. She doesn't need to be interviewed by you to get ripped apart for no reason. She doesn't need to be out there. She's got confidence. She's got a lot of self-confidence. The people really like her. And she was a really good first lady. But, you know, she did the most beautiful job in the Rose Garden. She rebuilt the Rose Garden. It was beautiful. No, it was gorgeous. And got good credit for it. But she did Christmas trees, too, every Christmas. Did the most beautiful job. Oh, I know. And they, and they of course, criticized her, even though her Okay, so she did a red trees. They were so beautiful, they killed her. She did uh, a different blue, beautiful tree. She, they killed her. They said, baby, do me a favor. Go with a green tree. She did a green tree and they killed her. Why weren't they red? It was much better. And then she did a white tree and they killed her. Of course. That. All right, so last question. You mentioned. But Barbara actually, Walters. they were beautiful, yeah. And the most fascinating person. That's got me thinking. I was thinking about you recently, just getting ready for this. You, you were pretty much universally liked or loved yeah. before you got into politics. I mean, you were known all over the world. You're a big celebrity. Everyone knew you and liked you. It just, you weren't controversial. You didn't think so? I thought I was. I don't think you were that controversial. I mean, I, I'm from New York. In yeah. New York, everybody loved you. Yeah. Um, no, I had, yeah, I had. Not like now. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah, OK. So, well, so you could be going you know, into your. You have your, to do the right thing, right? Yes. but you. And could, that makes you controversial. You could be going into your 78th year, enjoying this beautiful golf course, yeah. Mar-a-Lago, your lovely family. No. Um, you don't have to be running for president, sitting for four criminal trials, some civil, and possibly looking at jail time. No. Is it worth it? Yeah. Uh, make America great again. Our country's going to hell. Our country's going down. You don't realize it. I don't believe you realize it. But our country's going down. Our country, you know, I used to say we're going to end up being, if we don't do certain things, we're going to end up being Venezuela on steroids. How about? How about we're buying oil now from Venezuela? How about that? We're making Venezuela rich. OK, think of it. The people running Venezuela, which were total enemies, what we're doing is so crazy. We're not using our oil. We're making Venezuela rich. But the country, I believe, has one last chance. And that's this. this is the most important election we've ever had. You know, I used to say 2016 was the most important. And it was a very important election. And we turned the country around. We had the greatest economy in history. What we did is incredible. We knocked out a lot of enemies. We got them out. I took everybody out of these crazy wars that nobody wanted to be in. Even the other country that was protect, they didn't want us spending trillions and trillions of dollars. But our country's going bad. Our country's being destroyed. When you look at our cities with what's pouring into our cities now, they can't handle what they have. And um, I brought our country to a level that 
just prior to COVID coming in. And then I did it again because I built it again and the stock market was actually higher when I left than it was pre-COVID, which is like unbelievable. But we had a country that was actually really coming together because of success. I was getting calls, Megan, from the most liberal people. I would call them radical left, wanting to get together. And then we got hit with COVID. Our country was coming together because of success. African-American, Asian-American, Hispanic-American, uh, women, men, people with degrees from MIT, from Wharton, from Harvard, people with no degree at all, people with no high school. Everybody had great jobs. Everybody was making more money. And people were coming together. People wanted to see me. They wanted to meet people that normally that wouldn't take place. And I realized that success brings this country together. But um, we are, I say it in my speeches, we are a nation in decline. We are really a declining nation. We're a nation in serious, serious decline. And I think I can turn it around very fast. So um, I agree, I could enjoy all over the world. I have the most beautiful places in the world. I have the best of everything. And, uh, but I, I actually like doing this because of the fact that I see something that we have to save our country. You know, I have the expression, make America great again. And I was going to stop using that. I was going to, it was going to be called keep America great, keep America great. But such destruction took place over such a short period of time. I had to go back to make America great again. Because America, our country right now is not great. Our country's in trouble. Our country's left at. When President Putin of Russia uses an example of going after your political opponent, that's, that's the greatest thing could ever happen to him. What they're doing to our country is so bad. Uh, our country has never been this disjointed and this disunified. And, and wow. it started with President Obama. A couple of times. It started with President Obama. And, uh, it's now at a level that nobody's ever seen before. The, uh, you know, the two sides. You have two sides. But I believe that our side in the, look, I represent everybody. I, as president, I represent everybody. So, but I believe that uh, the people that love this country and that want to make it great again, that really want to make it, uh, you know, sustainable, because it's not sustainable right now, uh, I believe they far outweigh the other side. And uh, so when you say, would I like to be at uh, Turnbury in Scotland right now? Or would I like to be at one of the many places I have, the, the, the greatest places? The I may never see those places again. But I think this is very important. I think that we're going to save our country. I think we're going to win the election. I'm beating Biden by a lot. I'm beating the Republicans by numbers nobody's ever seen before. But I'm beating Biden by a lot. And I'll turn it around, and I'll turn it around fast. Good luck to you, Mr. President. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.